I'm up here on the scaffolding. I got that erected once again. And I'm working on the rear wall of the tiny house. And I'm sorry if you, the camera is shaky because the camera uh, the, is on a tripod and the tripod is sitting on the scaffolding and the scaffolding does move a bit uh, as I move on it. But uh, what I need to do is I'm working on the, uh, the upper window framing. And uh, if you saw in a previous video, I built basically a skeleton wall, just to, had a big open gap in it because they have two windows that are kind of up and down, uh, upper one, lower one, they, but they overlap. And uh, so I couldn't put a lot of framing in there. I have to piecemeal it. The header is not a two by six, it's two by four header because the window needs to go up as high as it can. And it doesn't need a two by six header because the top plate is right here. And this header is gonna go right up against it. So all I need to do now is I have to clamp this in place, secure it temporarily with some screws until I can get up here with the framing nailer and then uh, fasten it permanently. And I'm putting this in first so I make sure that I have the proper height for the rough opening. Uh, I have these studs that have to go in down below and uh, even though I did this in CAD, real world, real world measurements might be a little bit different. I might have to make some adjustments. So if I put this in first, measure down, make sure that everything agrees, a little bit of math, and uh, that way there, when I go to put the window in, I know it's going to fit. So I won't be doing too much filming up here because, again, the camera gets very shaky. Um, I don't want it to fall over or anything. But uh, you get the idea. And I'm taking this shot from uh, standing up on the scaffolding looking down. And uh, yeah, you can see the edge of the scaffolding there. So I'm actually five feet off the floor of the tiny house. The scaffolding's five feet high. But it seems a whole lot higher because the trailer itself is at least a couple of feet up off the ground. So that puts me. Well, seven feet, but it feels higher than that. And the uh, it's about a little over ten feet to the the top of these uh, these top plates here of the walls, and uh, just from the floor of the trailer, so it's a little over twelve feet in total. So when things get a little rickety, it's gets a little unnerving, especially if you're not comfortable with heights. I think I can live with that. So here we are up on the scaffolding. Uh, this is the rear end wall of the tiny house that I'm working on. I just put the, uh, the header in place for the upper window temporarily just with some screws. I haven't uh, used a framing nailer yet. And uh, I have a whole bunch of little pieces that have to be fit into place to make all this work. So it's a little bit tedious and time consuming because it's up and down the ladders and the scaffolding, back and forth, taking measurements, double checking, uh, cutting pieces of wood, and maybe doing a little bit of trimming here and there to make sure everything fits just right. So it's a little bit of doing. But once this end wall is done, I'll, I'll feel satisfied that everything is right and we have everything square and plumb and everything braced, it'll be good. So here is the, the rear end wall and uh, I've been trying to frame in this upper window and I've got a lot of little bits and pieces in place, but the lower sill plate I need to shave off about 3 16 because otherwise the rough opening won't be large enough. I mean the window would still fit but I wouldn't have a lot of wiggle room. So if I take it on my table saw, take about 3 16 off it, 
and that'll give me the uh, distance between top and bottom for the proper rough opening. So I just had a, I guess I made a couple little mistakes on the way, but not a problem. It's easily correctable. Um, so I might call it a day in climbing up and down these ladders and scaffolding and getting a little bit tired. And it's getting late in the day. So I think I'm just going to wrap up for the day and uh, I'll head home and I'll, I'll take that piece of wood with me, that silk plate. I haven't cut the proper length. Um, I just have to uh, take it home to my shop back there and run it through my table saw. And uh, then when I come back tomorrow or maybe even later tonight, uh, it should fit perfectly. It shouldn't be a problem. It's now Sunday, January 21st in the afternoon. And uh, earlier today, I finished this rear wall. There you can see that. Uh, it's hard to see with everything in the way, the bracing and the scaffolding. But I did finish it. Here from this view, I'm way back in the shop here. You can see that uh, all the windows are framed in, and you can see how they're offset. And uh, so everything had to be pieced together little by little. And it was very time consuming to make sure everything was square and plumb and everything fit properly and I had the right ROs and everything. Uh, but I got it and there it is. And now it's good and solid, it's all screwed. And I, then I took the framing nailer and went over everything with the framing nails and got it all beefed up. And she's good to go. And now the next section I'm working on is the uh, left rear section port side all the way on the rear the little short section but again um, I'm faced with windows that are offset and also uh, they kind of overlap into the next section so it's going to be very difficult to get you know some sort of wall or stud wall built that I can get into position again it's going to be a lot of little pieces that have to go together and uh, between the two sections, it's not going to be solid wall sections. Uh, uh, you'll see what, as it goes along, you'll see what I'm talking about. So this rear section is only four feet, seven and a half inches from here back to here. But the studs are nine feet, nine and a quarter inch tall on top of the sill plates. And uh, so you got over 10 feet between the sill plates and the top plate. And uh, with a couple of windows, one over the other, but offset. And going into this next section, so I don't have another, I don't have a stud coming straight up. It's going to be broken up somehow. Um, it's going to be a little bit weird. Now, it wouldn't be so bad if I had a crew, so I had a bunch of people, and we could basically assemble that wall or most of it in a, and then raise it but I don't I'm doing this uh, basically by myself so I just have to figure out ways to do it that way and so it's a little bit slower and it takes a little bit of thought but I'm still getting it done so I have that uh, port side rear section frame uh, for the wall laid out and as you can see there's not a whole lot to work with and uh, but at least you have a, I'll get a basic frame up and that gives me something to work with, uh, something I can screw and nail to. And uh, it gives me, you know, it gives me the parameters to work with and makes things a little easier. And what you're gonna see here is on this, this left side, there's a window that goes through there. What I did is I made a little cut right there, not all the way through, and out of the brace. And the same thing up here. And that way there I have a full section to get this in place. And then later on when I add other pieces I can eventually cut that section out for the window to uh, put in the uh, rough opening, the framing for it. But that at least gives me some support of the proper dimension just to get everything in place.
Thank <laughs> you.